Today on Everyday Tactical Vids, we're going to be talking about Schrade Survival Knives. And as you can see, we have four different knives here. Uh, what we'll be doing is talking through each of the knives, talk about some of the pluses and the minuses, and some of the applications for the different features of the knives. I will start off by telling you that I picked these four because I like these four and what they have to offer. But I will also say that Schrade does have a wide variety of fixed blade knives. And some of them are different than these, and some of them are very similar. For example, you can get this one with a partially serrated blade. You can get this one with a Tonto blade and also with a different style handle. But um, there are also ones that are totally different. So check out their website. You can just go to Schrade.com and that'll take you over to Taylor Brands. And then you can look through the, uh, the different knives that Schrade sells when it comes to fixed blades. So we'll look at these four. We'll look at their sheaths. We'll talk about them. And uh, then you can choose and say, hey, maybe one of these knives looks like a good blade for you when it comes to wilderness survival. First sheath that we're looking at is for the SCHF 13, and I'll show you that when you listen to this, you can hear that clicks in very positively, strong control, and that's not going to be coming out unless you put in quite a bit of effort. We'll talk about the blade in a little bit, but this is a Kydex sheath. You can see you got two grommet holes, and then basically your attachment points for your belt loop or your belt clip, depending on how you want to set it up. You can run this a variety of different ways. You can see as I have it set up now, when you put the blade in. If I ran a belt through here, I would be running it essentially vertically like this. Now you could run it the other way and run it like this and have it, you know, be have it uh, facing the handle facing down, and then you could put it at a variety of different angles as well. So you could cant it however you want to do it. Um, I think this I'm a, I'm a fan of Kydex sheaths. They're very simple. They do the job. They seem to take some uh, some aggressive use and not get beat up too easily. I like the the fact that you can set this up in a variety of different angles. The one thing I will say is that compared to some of the other sheaths that we'll talk about, this offers a lot less function. It holds the blade. It's got a variety of different uh, positions that you could set it up in. But other than that, there's nothing else that's included. Uh, that said, I also like this sheath the most because I think it's the most solid. One other thing I want to mention is that you can see here you've got you got the loop. I'm going to get the angle right here. you got the loop that you can actually run your belt through here. But you can also see if you pull this out a little bit, you've got some flex. So you can actually click this over the top of a belt, depending on how you have it set up. And just that tension will keep it generally in place so you can have you know, your blade locked in and hanging down from your, uh, from your sheath. So again, Kydex, very simple, comes with, the, uh, comes with the knife, nothing too fancy about it, but sturdy and gets the job done. The next sheath we're looking at here is for the SCHF-10. This is ballistic nylon. You got a hook and loop closure here. Take your blade out, slide it back in like this, and then you're gonna secure it like that. So let's get the blade out of the way here. One thing I will note, you can see, let's see if we can get the angle inside. Yeah, you can see you do have some, uh, looks like Kydex is actually inside, so you don't have the blade cutting up against the ballistic nylon. That, that blade goes actually into the Kydex. Now, you run your belt through here, and that's how you're gonna basically attach it. This is sewn in place, so you can't pull this off. There's no, uh, you know, Velcro hook and loop closure to adjust that. So you got to run your belt through here, and then it's on your it's on your belt. Um, one of the advantages of this sheath is that you do have this included small pouch. So you could put a fire steel in here. You could put a ferro rod. You know, some magnesium. You could put a small uh, fishing setup. Whatever you want that you want to put inside this um, inside this pouch, you can certainly do that. The, uh, the overall construction is, I, was, I would call it fine. It's not fantastic, it's not amazing. It gets the job done, uh, but for me personally, the reason I like the SCHF 13 blade, or the uh, sheath for this, is that this is so solid. It's not you know bending or anything like that when it's on your belt. This has a little bit too much flex for me. So it does work. Um, I do like the fact that on some of the other ones we'll look at, you do have some included cords, so you can wrap that around your, your, uh, your leg, and then this is running through your belt so you got a little more stability. This one's got a little bit too much movement for me. I do like all these knives a lot, but as far as the sheaths, um, this one, yeah, it's it's okay. It gets the job done. It holds the knife in place and you have a little extra storage there. So that's the uh, SCHF 10 and we're looking here at its sheath. Now a couple of the features that I like about the SCHF 9N uh, sheath more than the 10 is that on the back for your belt loop, You've got hook and loop, so you can take this on and off pretty easily. So I don't know if you'd call it QD, but it certainly uh, can detach rather quickly, so that's nice. And then, as I mentioned, you've got this pouch, and then down here you have an included lanyard, so this is already built in with your grommet holes there. 
and you can run this actually around your uh, around your leg. So same material, and the one challenge for this is because it is longer. I'll show you just the two by side by side. You can see that the uh, the nine is longer than the ten. You know, you've got a, a significant difference there. It, there is a little bit more of a flop here, just because of the length of the blade and the length of the handle. So um, again, it gets the job done. I do like the pouch. That's a nice feature, and the fact that they made it quick detach and the lanyard. I think those are two slight advantages that this one has over the 10. The last one we're looking at here is for the SCH F3N and you've got a snap here and then remove the blade and it's pretty much the same as those other ones I just showed to you as far as getting the blade in and then you also have that insert so you're not cutting the actual sheath. They call this ballistic nylon as well, but I would say the 10 feels more sturdy and the uh, 9 also feel more sturdy than this one. So I, it's just, it's not as strong. It's a little bit more lightweight, so you're going to save on the weight side of things. Um, one thing you can see is that you have a lot of cordage included, and so that, that's usable for a variety of things. Certainly if you want to secure it in a variety of different ways, and they call this a multiple position sheath, so you can you know tie it up, tie it down, strap it to your gear, whatever you want. Also now you have cordage you know right there with you. Maybe not as strong as paracord or bank line, but you got something with you as a um, as in a tool, as another resource if you're in a survival or outdoor situation. So you can see the grommet holes here, it runs through, and then on the back they come through. You can also see we've got some molly webbing there, so if you want to attach it with some sort of um, you know, clip or whatever it might be to some gear, you could certainly do that as well. I would say of the four, this one it seems the least sturdy as far as what the actual material is, and then the Kydex that I mentioned for the 13 probably seems the most sturdy. Uh, this one also does have this pocket here, it's not removable, but it does uh, take up a large portion there of the front of the sheath so you can store some extra things in there. So as you can tell, pluses and minuses to every one of the sheaths. There's upsides and downsides to what you're going to be getting or what you're not going to be getting from the different sheaths that you may uh, that you may get with the knives. So now that we looked at the sheaths, let's take a look at the blades. We'll look at these four blades two by two and first thing I'll mention is that there are a couple different options for these as I mentioned earlier. For the 3N you can get one that has partial serrations here and for the 13 you can get one that has a Tonto blade and for the Tonto blade it has a different style handle and you can also get this same drop point blade with a different style handle as well. So a couple different options within the family. This one is the smallest of all the knives obviously and if you saw my review of it you'll know I mentioned I like a small knife. I feel like I've got a lot of control when I'm actually using this blade. Um, the jimping is fine. I wouldn't say it's fantastic. It gets the job done. I'll show you here. Not super aggressive and as you can tell there's no real rise there as opposed to on this guy. You really you're going to be able to lock your thumb in a little bit more as far as the rise. I do think the jimping on the 13 get these lined up here. I do think the jimping on the 13 is a little bit more aggressive, gives a little bit more control than on the 3N. Uh, the handles it's a preference style. You've got G10 versus micarta. Uh, you've got you know your three different attachment points for the handle versus two on this one. I don't see that as a major plus or minus either way. You do have lanyard holes that can fit um, paracord or other some other type of line. And again, if you set that up like set your knife up like that, then you've got cordage with you when you're out there in the woods. Of all the blades, I would say this one has the uh, 3N here has the most aggressive um, pommel. So you're not going to be probably hammering with that, but it is aggressive. If you need to break something up, you could certainly use that one a lot more than say this. So if you if I sh show this one up close here, take a look there. You can see it's kind of scuffed up there. It's because I was using it to break things up. You can do that, but you're definitely going to be hitting on the uh, on the handle as well. Whereas for this one, it definitely sticks out quite a bit more. When it comes to overall size for the 3N, you're talking 12 inches end to end and 6.4 for the blade. And for the 13, you're talking 8.5 inches and 3.7 for the blade. So obviously the 13 is notably smaller than the uh, 3N, but just wanted to give you the specs on that. When it comes to your weight, you're talking one, one pound six ounces for the 3N, and you're talking 7.4 ounces for the 13. So definitely notably less weight for the smaller blade there. I would say for me, if I'm doing a lot of piercing, I want to be using a smaller blade like that. This is great for setting up, uh, you know, getting a bow drill started into your uh, into your fireboard. Having a, a smaller uh, tip like that, I find just to be really helpful. And just generally, you know, the smaller, when you have a finer tip, it's easier to do piercing. Not that this one can't do it, 
but it uh, I think it's a little bit more work or doesn't do as, as fine a work obviously because it's larger. Showing you the uh, the wear here. This is stone washed, so this is a little bit dirty here, but it's not worn at all, and that's because it's made to look a little bit worn when you get it. And I think that's actually kind of a neat feature. So that's the uh, that's the 13 for the 3N. This is this was all straight black when I got it, so you can see it definitely has worn off on both sides. And if you saw my review on this, you know I use it quite aggressively. I really batoned a lot with this just for the review to start off. Um, and that has worn off a bit. So another another detail there you might want to keep in mind. Now one thing I wanted to mention about having a smaller versus a larger blade, and normally you wouldn't be batoning through a piece of 2x4, but just to show you as an example, when you are batoning and you're set up like this, right, I'm giving the, uh, the top down view, and so you can see like this, even if I push this all the way to almost where the handle is, I'm hitting on here, I'm hitting on here, I'm hitting on here, and as it's going down, you know, the blade shifts back and forth, and so as it shifts back more and more this way, you're hitting more and more on just the tip here, and so then you have to hit on this side, and then maybe get it to come back through, and then back on this side. So it does take a little bit more effort and finesse to baton with a smaller blade like this. I generally find that as I'm batoning, it's going through, it's going through, and the blade's moving like this, and then, you know, it's not that far out, but as it's coming through, I'm batoning now more on this side. It's just a little bit more work. When you have a larger blade, I'm going to just look at the size comparison here, right? So I can, can baton very aggressively on this side, and even if it comes through quite a bit, I can still be hitting quite hard on this side. So just to show you, put these two side by side, you can see you've got, you know, a, an additional... I would say two and a half to three inches here on the end of the uh, on the end of the blade. When you line them up to the actual cutting points, uh, probably closer to two to two inches. But uh, you d it is easier to baton with a larger blade like this, and also it's just bigger and beefier in general. So that's something to keep in mind depending on how much batoning you're doing in a wilderness survival situation. When it comes to the steel, you have 7C17 high carbon stainless steel and then 8CR13 MOV high carbon stainless steel. So stainless steel, different types. There's different people have lots of opinions on what the best type of blade or type of steel is for a blade. Um, that's just something to put into your, uh, into your mind as you're making your decision. One thing I will note is that when you're dealing with a ferro rod and the 13, you can Using the spine, you can actually get a uh, you can get a spark. I did test it with the blade, which I know is going to make some of you guys cringe, but just to test it for people out there who might want to get it, um, you can get a spark with the blade. Using the spine, it is a bit more work here. Let's see if I can get it to happen. Might be able to see. I got a tiny one there. There's another tiny tiny spark. There you go, a little bit more, just a little bit more effort, you can, you can make it happen with the uh, 3N, watch this, no problem whatsoever. So just something to keep in mind when it comes to the two blades, uh, that's another feature you want to think about when you're dealing with picking a outdoor or wilderness survival blade. So looking at these two knives, um, pluses and minuses. So lightweight for the 13 and the Kydex sheath. This is the sturdiest, sturdiest sheath, I think, out of all four. Uh, heavier, probably more durable overall because of the weight of the, um, of the knife. And a couple more options in the sheath. Sheath not as sturdy, but you can store some extra material in there. And it does come with some, uh, some cordage already. So there's a look at the first two blades. Some of the pluses and minuses. Out of these two, again, I prefer a smaller knife, so I would lean toward the 13. That's just my style of uh, knife that I prefer for uh, wilderness survival um, applications and how I use the knife most, most often. So let's take a look at the two other knives. Our next two blades here are the Schrade SCHF-10 and the Schrade SCHF-9N. And a couple of things that are uh, noteworthy right off the bat here, you can see that when we actually line up the cutting portions of the blade, the 9 is larger, but not by a ton. So when you pile them on top of one another, like so, tip to tip, you can see here you've got you know probably an inch and a half to two inches of more handle space. There are some other differences, but seems to me from what I understand that the 10 was kind of modeled after. This was the kind of base, and then the 10 was a spin-off of this base model. Uh, both these have been pretty popular. I would say this one, the 9N in particular, has been very popular because of the price point. You're talking uh, around $50. And we'll do a wrap-up at the end and talk about money uh, and the cost for these different knives. But $50 for a big, beefy knife like this, a lot of people have really liked that.
Let's talk about the handles and control. They call this a TPE handle. It's basically, I would say, most people call it rubberized. So you've got this cool texturing on this handle and it is, it's got kind of a rubberized feel to it. And this one is micarta. And uh, I'll show you the jimping here on the bottom. You got quite a bit on the bottom. You have some up here so you could choke up, some here as well. And that's it for this blade. And then here you've got jimping on the top, but it's kind of inset with the uh, handles there. And then on the bottom, no jimping. So when it comes to actual jimping and control, the 10 certainly has a lot more going on for it. And even this jimping here, uh, this is similar to the, where is it here? The 13, you can see they're both kind of set in there into the handle and I just, I'm not a huge fan of that. It sticks out just a tiny bit, but if I'm gonna get a hold of something, I really want a, uh, you know, a nice strong grip on it and I want that jimping to, uh, to help me out in that process. So that's as far as the handle, it's, it's kind of a preference thing. Um, the rubberized one seems like in, in wetter weather, you're gonna have a better grip on this, but it's certainly not like this. Uh, my card handle is gonna be flying out of your hand uh, very easily. Both of these have lanyard holes, as you can see, and this one has a little bit more of an end that you could use as a pommel. You could certainly use this one as well, um, but as I said before, really the three end is the main one that has a pommel that you could use more aggressively, and it kind of fits into that um, based on the build. Neither of these would I really want to use a ton um, when it comes to the pommel, you know, breaking rocks or whatever it might be. As far as the steel, for the 9N, you have uh, 1095 high carbon stainless steel, and for the 10, you have 8CR13 MLV high carbon stainless steel. Again, that's a, I'm not going to go into a big discussion on that. There's a lot of preferences on what people like or don't like when it comes to A, a survival knife, but just B, in general, the type of steel they have on their knives. Overall length for the 9 is 12 inch inches, and your blade length is 6.4, your weight is 15.9 ounces, and for the 10, your overall length, 10.6 inches. 5.3 for the uh, blade, and then 14.6 ounces. So those are some of the uh, the main differences. You can see this also has that black coating similar to the uh, to the 3N, and I've used this quite a bit, and it hasn't gotten beat up nearly as much. So that's actually nice. You can see the blade is a little bit beat up, which proves you that I have used it a bit, um, but it seems to maintain that black coating a little bit more effectively than maybe the 3N actually actually does. Now, as I mentioned before, let me get out my block of wood here and show you again. When it comes to batoning, you do have quite a bit of blade length for both of these, but line them up side by side, and you can see that compared, let me get the angle right here for you, that compared to the 13, you just got uh, more real estate to do some aggressive batoning. So if you're gonna be batoning, these two and the 3N are definitely gonna be easier than using the, uh, using the 13. Let's show you how both these work when it comes to uh, throwing a spark with a ferro rod. Here's the nine first. So that works quite easily. And here's the 10. So both of these, no real problem at all when it comes to actually throwing a spark with your ferro rod. So if you heard me talk about the length of the SCHF 13 and how I like something slightly smaller when it comes to a survival knife, it'll make sense to you that I actually like this knife a little bit more than the uh, than this one, so the 10 over the 9, and both of them very nice, very good deals, I think, for the price point. You know, you're not paying a ton of money, and again, we'll wrap that up at the end with the cost for each one of these. For the 9N, you are getting a larger sheath, and it does have the removable pocket that is slightly larger, so you can store more stuff in it, store more gear in it. Um, this one is slightly smaller, slightly smaller pocket. This one I find a little bit more manageable, less kind of flop and movement when you actually have it secured. Um, to your belt, even though this one does have the uh, the lanyard, I just I'm not a huge fan of having to tie something around my leg down, you know, on my thigh. I just would prefer the uh, the sheath does the job uh, without having to secure it um, on my leg or on my leg once it's actually on the belt. But that's that's a preference of mine as well. So um, basically, because of the size and I like the grip on the um, on the ten as well, and I just think this is a really attractive blade. I think it's just a good looking blade, and I like the handle a lot as well. So, but with either one of these, I don't think you'd be disappointed. If you like a slightly larger blade for a survival knife, then that could be a good option for you. So wrapping up here again, we've got the 3N, the 9N, the 10, and the 13. And your price point is going to be around 47, 40, and 40, and 31. So 31 up to 47, not a huge disparity in price. 
and you do have a lot of different size, shape, and function when it comes to these knives, depending on what your preference is, and also consider that sheath because uh, you're going to be keeping that knife in the sheath a lot. So if you don't like the sheath, that's something to consider. If you do like the sheath, that's something to consider as well. So uh, add that into the process of selecting a knife. Of these four, I like this one the most currently because it offers some of the compact features of the smaller knife, but also some of the features of the large knife. But all four of these are going to be good survival knives for you. And again, the price point, very, very reasonable uh, for what you're getting. And um, i become a fan of Schrade over the uh, the last year or so because I've used their knives and been quite, quite happy with them. And um, yeah, so I think if you're getting into survival, you want a good solid fixed blade, full tang knife. Uh, this is These are some really good options from Schrade. So thanks for checking out the review. Please comment down below if you have any of these knives, if you've used, if you've used them, you have friends that use them. Let's hear what your thoughts are. Let's get the conversation going in the comments. So as always, please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and check us out on Tumblr. Take care.